Hey guys, Surgeon here. So I've already done a recap of everything that happened at RuneFest, but there was a lot of stuff and I didn't go into very much detail with some of that. And one of the most controversial topics that was discussed was the new skill warding. So in this video, we're going to go into touch on everything that we know so far about warding because there is a lot of information here and some stuff that some people, at least in my clan chat, seem to be overlooking. So I really just want to bring to light a uh, pretty much everything that they've told us about warding so we can all be more educated on you know the topic itself. Um, before this video starts though, um, in the comments, let me know what your thoughts are on warding or at least your first thoughts. And if they change at the end of the video, go ahead and let me know like what you think after the video. Um, but with that being said, let's go ahead and jump into this. So I'm um, just gonna read this word for word at the beginning to really set the mood, set the mood for everybody. Warding. The ground shook across the land as six ominous rocks rose from the earth in a swirl of magic and rubble. The scholars of the Wizard's Tower, I, they really fucked up that whatever. They, they, they really messed up that punctuation, whatever. The scholars of the Wizard's Tower were quick to act and immediately began studying the monolithic monstrosities. They quickly discovered a method of manipulating the energy within the rocks and with various magical tools used it to create armors and impressive capabilities. Some would say this came far too easily, as if they knew exactly what they were doing. Dive into the first new skill called warding, and then completely break character at that point. So the skill cave, it's obviously the best part of this skill. Like, real talk, this should have been what the achievement diary cape looked like. A total of, like, color scheme, what it should have looked like, but whatever, that's the point neither here nor there. Going into what it actually is. So what warding is, is it's... Magic's version of smithing and crafting. So with smithing, you're able to create gear for uh, melee. With crafting, you're able to create gear for ranging. With warding, you'd be able to create gear for magic. With mining or with smithing, you have the partner skill or like the skill that complements it the most being mining. With crafting, when you're crafting like armor, the skill that complements that is combat. With warding, your main partner skill will be farming. Um, to farm the silk and you can use two other skills two other skills will be used as well which will be wood cutting and um, mining to harvest other materials needed to craft the goods um, so the materials that you'll be using i already said one of these but one of them is going to be silk and that's harvested from a new patch they're calling it the i'm going to butcher this so hard but it's the magnanery which is basically cultivating worms and you harvest their silk kind of like a traditional silk worm kind of deal it fits very like thematically and um, you'll also have bark to work with which will be cut from trees pretty um, obviously um, they can also be found through hunter as well by killing certain monsters but that's not one thing that they're really preaching they're mainly preaching that you're going to be farming the silk from the um, silkworms and that you will be gathering the bark from you know chopping down trees um, another thing that you'll be included in this will be the runic energy so read this word for word runic energy is a powerful new resource contained within the runestone monoliths players can draw the or wow they really messed that up players can draw the runic energy out and store it by casting spells on the monoliths this gives players the option to train magic by splashing but with the added benefit of gathering a useful resource at the same time this should take splashers out of Lumbridge Castle basement and spread them across Gilinor at more thematic locations. Wearing equipment that provides magic bonus will increase runic energy potential, breaking up the army of graceful clones and people in like full iron. Full iron. It will be. It will also be possible to passively collect energy at rune altars when rune crafting. The energy will be tier a tiered resource, meaning that you will gather mine energy at one runic monolith and death energy at another. The tier of energy you need for warding will depend on your level and the equipment you wish to create. A conversion system will allow runic energy to be upgraded or downgraded, but some will be lost in the process. So basically, uh, some people are kind of saying this is like divination in RS3 where you're harvesting energy. Um, it seems like that where you're just harvesting energy, but it's, I guess, a little bit different because you're not purely harvesting energy and then converting memories into experience. And you're not actually training the skill. You're simply gathering a resource at this point. And the nice thing about it is that it, it's another way to splash. And it's actually a way to splash and get, you know, um, actual money out of it. Because you'll be harvesting the runic energy when you splash. And you'll have to be in 
uh, more thematic robes, so like wizard robes, mystic robes, whatever. And it really kind of helps add to the theme of old school RuneScape and the theme of training magic. So it, I can understand why they want to do this because it doesn't look good when you first log into the game. You just see this army of people in like full metal gear splashing on rats and spiders and lovers just doesn't look good so i appreciate what they're doing here and we'll see how it goes overall runic energy is just another resource that you can gather um it is tradable but you gather it through splashing on monoliths also um you'll get it passively while doing re or doing rune crafting so this isn't a cop out for like if you're a skiller you're still able to collect it just through rune crafting you don't have to do any kind of combat to get it um, the tools that you're going to be using for this. So we're going to have two different types of tools. We're going to have, let me try to get this both into focus. So we're going to have soapstones. So what soapstones are is they're, the way that they kind of described it is that imagine that they're like pieces of chalk. And basically what you'll do is you'll take whatever, you know, soapstone you have, whether it's air, water, earth, fire, which are the four runes that they said that we're going to use, the four soapstones that we're going to use, and what you'll do is you'll take the soapstone and you'll draw a circle on the ground and that's what you'll use to ward. So imagine it like you light a fire and then you cook your food on the fire. It's the same concept. You can draw the monolith anywhere you can light a fire. So you, like, you know, right next to the GE, you know, take one step out. There you go. You can light, you can do a monolith or you can do a ward right then and there, right next to the GE. You don't have to do them at the monoliths. However, there is a benefit to doing it at the monolith. And that's that when you draw a ward at a monolith, um, it will actually lower the rate of runic energy that you use. So yes, you'll have to travel farther, but you won't use as much runic energy. So looking at this, it's really going to depend on how quickly you can get to a monolith, whether or not people are going to be drawing wards at a monolith, or whether or not they're just going to be doing it right next to a bank so they can quickly get their resources out. Again, there's not a whole lot, there's no numbers here, so we just have to speculate at that point. But yeah, you can use soapstones anywhere you can normally light a fire, and you get your runic energy is drained less when you do it at a monolith. Um, the other thing, the other tool that we're going to have with this will be channeling lamps. And they're an equipable tool to store your runic energy. Uh, when casting spells on runic monoliths or rune crafting, the runic energy you generate will fill the lamp you have equipped. Higher level lamps will be required to gather higher tier energy or use it at a ward. So what this basically sounds like is it's a portable way to carry your um, runic energy so you don't have to waste an inventory spot on it. However, from what the dev blog sounds like, it sounds like that the higher level lamps... Um, are the only way that you can actually use that energy at a ward. It doesn't sound like you can use lower tiered lamps and use the energy inside of it at a ward. It looks like you also like take it out of the lamp. But again, that could just be wording, but that's really what we have right now is that the lamps are basically a portable storage for your runic essence so it doesn't have to take up an inventory spot. And when you're splashing or when you're rune crafting, you just equip a lamp and you're, I assume this would be an offhand slot. They didn't mention it, but I mean, it seems like it would be an offhand slot. And from what um, videos we've seen, it looks like an offhand. You just equip it in your offhand slot. And then as you gather energy, it will store away in your lamp. So you have it at all times. Um, so that's pretty much the basics of what all goes into warding. So now we'll talk about the step-by-step -step guide that they talk about. Um, so first is that you need to gather your resources. Like any kind of like craftable skill, and when I say craftable, I mean like, you know, smithing, crafting, um, herb lore, farming, things like that. You need to gather your resources first before you can train it. It's not a gatherer skill. So the first two things you're going to need to gather your silk. Um, so you can gather them through, you know, farming the silkworms, like I talked about, the menagari, whatever. Um, or you can always just buy it from other players. Um, then you'll need to gather your runic energy by casting spells on the monolith, like we talked about. Or you can also buy that as well. Uh, then what you'll do is when you have your all your supplies, so you have your silk, you have your energy, you have your bark, whatever you need. Then what you'll do is you'll draw a ward on the ground with whatever soapstone that is required, and then you'll use your materials on it, and you'll channel the runic energy into them to create your equipment. So you'll gather your resources, you'll draw a ward, you'll use your materials on the ward, and then you'll create the goods. So, I know the goods, it sounds weird, but you, then you'll create whatever item you're trying to create. So... 
from that standpoint, it sounds kind of like a viable skill. Um, just from the, the concept of gathering resources, then turning them into something else. Um, definitely sounds like it's going to become a viable skill. Granted that it's not absurdly difficult to gather your resources. If it's really easy to gather your resources, then why would you buy them? Um, they also give us this kind of brief like glimpse as to what kind of equipment we can expect to see. So the nice thing is that they're actually implementing the wizard like hoods and the Zamorak hood, which is really cool. Um, the fact that they're actually adding a headpiece now to these. Um, so as you can see, um, you know, the level one wizard skirt, it's going to take two magic cloth and mind energy. So we can assume that you would need to siphon energy from the mind monolith in order to get the mind energy to craft that. Um, as we move down, you see it requires varying um, levels of cloth with the body taking the most, which kind of makes sense. Um, then we move on to Zamorak. Um, so Chaos Energy, again, Chaos Monolith, we can assume. Looks like there's different types of cloth. So you have Magic Cloth and Holy Cloth. It's probably dependent on whatever type of worm that you farm, but they don't mention that. Um, so we can gather a lot from this and see that, you know, it looks like the lowest tier would be like Magic Cloth. So I guess you could consider that like, you know, a guam leaf if we're comparing this to herb lore um, looks like holy cloth is the next step up so that could be like i don't know harlander then you have um well we use holy cloth for all of druid you use holy cloth for all of monk and then you go into zarishan fabric which we already have in the game so it looks like there's just adding in more kind of like fabric or cloth options for us and maybe they're harvestable through um combat as well they don't mention it but i know the zarishan fabric you can already kind of get a version of that through combat so it'd be interesting to see if they do that but as we can see like you have varying levels of cloth and varying levels of energy so you can see like there's a cosmic energy here chaos energy again so that's it's like gathering whatever materials you need to create whatever gear you want and it looks like it's going to vary based on level as you get higher levels you'll need more levels of cloth because we can already see as we get to the Zeretian robes, whereas up here, where the wizard, the druid, the Zamorak, and the monk's robe all required like four cloth, or um, like the Zamorak robe was two magic, two holy, total four. The Zeretian robe requires five cloth, and the skirt requires four cloth, so it looks like as we get higher, it may require more cloth or more materials, which kind of makes sense. It's pretty standard. Um, some of the other perks that it's bringing into the game would be dissolving, which... Um, Basically, if you know anything about invention, basically you can think like, um, I forget what the word is. I think it's like dismembering. That sounds really wrong, but I think it's actually disassembling is what it is. And basically what it does is it allows you to take like items that you wouldn't normally use and you can break them down into raw components that you would use for warding. Um, so, but you have to use them on a ward, whereas like an invention, you can do it anywhere. Um, with warding, you have to use it on a ward. So word for word, um, another use for wards takes the form of dissolving. This involves using undesired or junk items and using them on a ward to break them down. In return, you'll receive runic energy and a chance to get back some of the components the item is made of. For example, dissolving an adamant plate body will give you a chance of receiving some adamant bars. So it's a way to break down things and break them down to their, um, you know, core items. Uh, but by no means is it like going to say, oh, you can just, you know, make 10 adamant plate bodies, break them down, and then keep using those same adamant bars, and then, woo, got 99 smithing for free, very slow, but for free. No, there's a chance that you'll gain it back, so it's not like you're going to get all five of those bars back. Another thing they mentioned was including the ring imbues. They're including ring imbues into the warding skill rather than Nightmare Zone itself. Um, for, I haven't heard this argument, but apparently they've heard a lot of talk about how the imbues like the ring imbues doesn't necessarily fit inside what nightmare zone feels like and so what they're going to do is to tie in the imbuing into the warding skill itself and something else that they mentioned that they in the presentation that they didn't mention it here um, was that there's also the possibility of adding in different kinds of rings that would have different kind of perks and the one ring that they gave an example of was um you know while you're wearing this ring you have the chance of you know, getting a double harvest. So um, you could be picking, you know, toad flax and whenever you harvest your toad flax, like every chance when you're harvesting it. So like every time you pick an herb, there's a chance you could gain a second herb from it. Uh, so that was one of the examples they gave. Um, obviously there's a ton of other things that they could do with that, but that was purely just the example they gave in their video. 
Um, so the impact, probably the thing that most people are concerned about is, well, what does this have like in terms of like on old school itself? Um, the biggest thing about this was, that was a surprise to me was, is warding available to non-members? And I'm gonna summarize this. Yes, it is available to non-members and it's gonna work kind of like crafting and smithing where the lower level items up to around level 40 uh, will be available to free to play. So you'll be able to level this in free to play, which is, that's, I mean, that's really cool having another free to play skill like that we're adding in content that's not only available to members like everybody who plays the game will have access to the skill which is really neat like instead of just making it a play pay to play skill I kind of like that. Uh, will warding be quest locked again if we're making it free to play it doesn't really make sense to be quest locked so they don't want that to be the case they want it to be just like a very simple skill like other skills um, that you just want it to be when you come off the off of Tutorial Island, you can go ahead and start making your own magic gear. Another question was, can it produce the best in slot equipment? We have to look back at smithing and crafting for this. Does smithing and crafting create the best in slot gear from melee and range? No, it doesn't. So would it make sense to make warding create the best in slot gear? Um, they did mention the um, addition of soul bark and blood bark, but they mentioned that those wouldn't necessarily be, you know, offensive mage gear where it's giving you a high magic bonus instead it's giving you good defenses with some magic bonus so if you needed to tank i don't know any kind of damage while you're casting mage blood bark and soul bark would be ideal for that but it's not going to replace ancestral it's not going to replace arams probably wouldn't replace mystic in terms of like offensive capabilities but it's creating new gear that's going to be maybe better for certain niche situations but don't worry, your ancestral is not going to lose like 200 million GP value. Um, and how will warding affect the economy? Ultimately, no one knows. You can't predict this. Um, there, I'm just going to leave it at that. You really can't predict this. Some other like resources are going to be implemented into the game and it's going to make the value of other things more important. But there's really no way to foretell what this is going to do to the economy. Is it going to completely devalue some things? Possibility. Is it going to completely change the value of other things? Possibly. I mean, just last night, there was this huge change in the part, price of Bark. Bark from being 400 GP to 2,000 overnight, and then it dropped back down to like 800 or 900. So, I mean, if enough people speculate on something like leading up to this, if enough people speculate, yeah, it's going to affect the economy. But it's really hard to tell right now. So, yeah, that's warding. That is everything that we know about warding right now um, i know it's a very lengthy video but there's a lot of stuff here we're talking about a completely new skill the potential first new skill for old school runescape so there's a lot of info here um, those of you who just wanted the info you're more than welcome to leave the video now i'm going to go into more of my thoughts behind everything and kind of touch on some of the more controversial topics so if you just wanted the info and just wanted to know what all we know leave the video now like it if you liked it up to this point and um yeah Thank you very much for watching. All right, you schmucks that decided to stick around and listen to my commentary on this. So the first thing I want to talk about, actually, you know, fuck that. We're going to talk about this first. It's available to free to players. That is so good. Oh, I can't get over that. I'm actually like so happy that it's available to free to players. Like, am I expecting a lot of free to players to get 99 in this? No, God, no. But like, it just, it, mm, with mobile coming out, like, it's going to bring in more people into the game and it has the effect of like drawing in new people because it's like, oh, I can create my own magic gear now. Like there's just so much goodness to making it available to free to players. Like I'm so good job to you, Jagex. Like I'm very, very happy about that. All right. That's it for that. Um, one of the main things that has been talked about in my CC, how does this fit into old school? It's a very simple skill. It's not dungeoneering, it's not invention, it's not summoning. Like, all three of those skills were... You could argue that summoning wasn't really that complex, but compared to the other skills, it's much more complex. Um, it's not any of those skills. It's a very simple skill. And for, like, old school's first skill that they're trying to preach, or trying to bring into the game, you need that. Like, you can't bring in something super complex because we saw the same thing that happened with Artisan when Artisan was first like talked about. One, it may have been too early to even talk about adding a new skill, 
But another thing is like it was just there was so much to it. There were so many ins and outs of it. So old school RuneScape is just a very simple game. Like you can argue that there's a lot of complexities to it, and there is. Like for those of you that want to invest a lot of time, like you know one tick prayer flicking, um, you know six jazz, the competition that they had at RuneFest. Like yes, if you want to invest the time, there's a lot of very difficult things you can do, but old school RuneScape is just a very simple game in general. And so the warding and the way that it's designed is it's a very simple skill. It fits thematically into old school. If rangers can craft their own gear, if smithers, if meleers can craft their own gear, why can't mages create their own gear? We've never really been able to discover how magic gear was created before. We just always assumed, oh, it's magical. It just kind of appears out of thin air. Well, now we have a now we have an origin for it, which is really nice. Um, the materials, talking about the materials, um, I think it's weird that farming is one of the um, main ways of gathering your resources. Uh, it just it didn't really seem to fit, and there's not a whole lot that I can really say about it. I do like the theme of silkworms and grabbing silk from silkworms, like it's very thematically on point. So I appreciate that, but. There's not much really to say about that. The runic energy. This is ultimately, if I had to look at everything that they talked about with warding, I think that how they did the runic energy, or at least how they've illustrated that runic energy point, is probably one of the best things that they talked about. Splashing, ever since splashing was first found out, has been something that's plagued old school, and it's plagued just how everything looks. No one wants to go around and see a bunch of people in melee armor using magic spells on rats and not dying and not killing anything, and yet somehow you're getting more proficient at magic. It just, thematically, it's not good. You're noticing I'm using that word a lot because a lot of this has to do with the feel. People argue that old school, like they want it to feel like old school. This feels like old school. It feels like... It feels like you're a mage trying to create your own gear. It feels like you're trying to imbue your own magical sense into the magic gear. Like, it feels like it should. It, I don't, I can't describe it. It just, it feels like something that should be a RuneScape. Um, but what they're doing with, yeah, you can, you can splash. Like, you can splash, gain another resource. So not only are you gaining magic experience, but you're also... Getting something back from splashing where normally you wouldn't, so you're it's already a net positive. You have to wear magic gear, or it's incentivizing you to wear magic gear, so you get more energy. So you look like an actual wizard, your wizard Harry. Casting magic spells, trying to gain a resource to do something. Even if you're just training magic, like it just it feels more like RuneScape. It feels more like you're a mage actually doing something rather than just training a skill. Moving on, um, lamps, soapstones. Again, the only way that we're going to know if soap stoning and creating a ward at a monolith is worth it is whether or not they're easy to teleport to. If you can reduce that travel time to where it makes sense for you to go to that monolith, then yeah, obviously people are going to train there. But if you're not able to, if there's no teleport to get there, then it's just going to be probably train at the GE, take one step out, create a ward, and there you go. Like that's probably what it's going to turn into. Um, in terms of XP. Do I think this is going to be a 200 mil buyable skill? Like some people are like, I don't want another 200 mil buyable skill for 99. It's like, no, maybe, I don't know. No one knows right now. So if you're, if your main concern for this skill is that it's going to be a 200 mil buyable skill, I'm trying to think of a skill that's even 200 mil buyable right now. Like I don't even think construction's 200 mil. Like maybe it's 150 mil. Maybe it is. Herbal is probably expensive. But, like, you look at fire making. I mean, that's not viable. Hell, we just do winter child for that now. You look at crafting. Crafting could probably get up to 200 mil. Smithing, I mean, you net, you kind of equal out. You don't really lose that much money. Maybe, like, 50, 70 mil. Not much. Like, it's not, it's not, 200 million for a 99 just, that seems outrageous to me. Like, I don't know. I don't see it costing that much. Maybe I'll be wrong, but if your main concern is that it's just going to be another 200 mil buyable, no. Is it going to be a buyable? Yes. I can say that with like probably 75% confidence interval that it's going to be a buyable. Um, but again, at this point, 
It's been five and a half years since we've had any kind of new addition like this into the game, a new skill. I don't know. I feel like it's ready. I think the overall process for creating everything seems kind of fair. I mean, not a whole lot to really write home about there. Um, the dissolving, I really like. Reason being is that it's a pseudo money sink. It's not a very strong money sink. It's not like construction where money literally leaves the game. Um, it's taking items out of the economy. So like one thing that was really good with Invention, and yes, I'm going to talk about RS3 here, but Invention did so much good for RS3. Like it, it raised the price of Barrow's items from like some of the items were like, I remember Carol's tops being like, you know, a couple hundred K when Invention came into the game, one, people were dissolving those because you had to augment them to gain like, you know, experience in the skill. But people were also just like dissolving them, breaking them down for like certain parts because you could only break down certain items to gain certain parts. And so it created this whole, we have to take items out of the game in order to increase the prices. So it wasn't like it directly took that particular item out of the game. What it did was it took the item out of the game and then put something new in its spot. And it kind of helped, it created almost like a, um, maybe like a facade, I don't know. It created a pseudo money sink for RS3 and it helped the economy a bit. And now, obviously I haven't played RS3 in a long time, but when Invention came out, like that was the big thing, was that it took items out of the game, which we hadn't really had in a while. Um, and Nightmare Zone, I agree. Nightmare Zone, there's a, there's a lot of reasons why you would want to do Nightmare Zone. And I think adding imbuing rings to like a magic, more magic oriented skill just kind of makes sense. But yeah, that's kind of all my opinions on warding. Um, people are going to want to know what do I think about the skill in general. Um, I'm going to vote for it. I just want a skill at this point. I love skilling. I'm what, base 90? I'm almost 99 agility. Like I'll probably get I'll probably get max like during the first of the year, the first month of the next year. I'm just ready for a new skill. I just love training new skills. And for those of you who are worried about, oh, it's gonna turn into RS3, it's turning into RS3. The main thing that really, at least from like my analysis on it and stepping back, the main thing that made RS3 RS3 was the EOC. EOC and Dungeoneering Rewards. Like, that's really what kind of tanked RS3. I still enjoyed playing RS3. I got maxed on it, got 120 Dungeoneering, did all that shit. But, like, for me, that was the main thing that, like, made RS3 stop feeling like RuneScape. Was when they introduced the EOC. As long as we still have the old combat system, we still have the old graphics. This is a skill that really just fits thematically with RuneScape. It's simple, but yet... At the same time, it fits with what we're supposed to be doing. So, would I vote for the skill? Yeah, I would. Um, if you don't want to, that's cool. You know, you're more than welcome to think that. I'd be interested to hear why you don't want to vote for it. Um, and possibly open up a discussion on that. But, ultimately, you're going to do whatever you want to do. That's going to be it for me, though. That's everything we know about warding. And those are my opinions on warding and kind of my feelings about them. Because, you know, everyone just wants to express their feelings because we're all special little snowflakes. Um, if you enjoyed the video, go ahead and give it a like. If your thoughts about warding have changed since the beginning of the video, go ahead and let me know those in the comment section below. I'd be really interested to read about that. Um, if you want to see more content from me, go ahead and subscribe and hit the bell so it rings in your ear hole when I have a new video out because I have this video right now. I'm going to be working on another similar video to the Kevis Lowlands where we talk about the Zaya expansion. Um, so if you want to see that, go ahead and subscribe as well. And links to all my socials will be in the description. So if you want to see those, you know where to go as long as my, as well as my CC, if you're looking for one of those to hang out in and um, yeah, it's going to do it for me. Have a great night, morning, evening, afternoon, midday, mid, late afternoon, lunch. Yeah. Whatever you get the point. Adios.